Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Uh, today, we're continuing our coverage, and I'm kind of doing a part two of uh, the Ukraine-Russian uh, crisis. And what I wanted to talk about in this video, kind of what I thought was uh, was going to happen in terms of this uh, ongoing situation taking place. So first, it, it is very, very difficult for uh, any analyst or, or really anybody uh, who uh, is looking at what is occurring to have really a definitive uh, answer to what is going to be the uh, the final outcome in terms of uh, what is uh, is going to happen and uh, as I just talked about in my previous video uh, this is a, a a huge military buildup that is uh, being very well telegraphed so uh, any element of surprise that uh, that Russia would enter the Ukraine is uh, is really being uh, negated at this point and uh, you have to look at uh, you have to look at that strategy, and uh, that is not normally how the Russians operated operate. So, what are some op options right now in terms of the strategic thinking of both Vladimir Putin and possibly the uh, the general staff of the uh, of the uh, Russian military? So, I think there's there's a couple of different things that can ha happen. Obviously, we could see an all-out military invasion of Ukraine. We could we could also see uh, some sort of uh, strange uh, diplomatic uh, occurrence happen, and uh, and then a complete pullback of the Russian military. So those are two uh, very very probable outcomes. And then you also have the uh, the alternative uh, outcomes to some of these uh, these uh, military. Uh, options that uh, Vladimir Putin currently has. Uh, I would say you could quite possibly see a an initial pullback. I think right now he could be overbuilding his force construct. And I think at a certain point we may get to an area where he says, well, the, the, uh, the uh, military activities, the uh, uh, the exercises have completed, and we are now uh, conducting a mass pullback of our forces after a successful deployment of all these forces from throughout the Russian Federation. This was the largest force deployment in the history since the breakup of the uh, of the Soviet Union. And then he could get about 20% through this pullback. We could hear CNN confirming, hey, yeah, the Russians are pulling back. We could hear NBC. We can hear Sky News saying, yep, the Russians are pulling back. Uh, a catastrophe has been mitigated, then something happens on the border uh, that maybe it's some sort of provocation either way. Maybe it's in, in all probability, if, if it's intent based, uh, it would be a, it would be a, a Russian move. And then obviously we could see that change very, very quickly. And these forces that are supposedly being pulled back would be more or less a strategic reserve. And then the real operation kicks off. So that's one uh, area that I think we, we could we could possibly see. Again, uh, we, we, would, we, would, we would hear something along the lines of uh, his forces are pulling back after the successful uh, military exercise. Something then happens uh, while, this, while these forces are then pulling back. And uh, and then all, all hell breaks loose. Uh, additionally, uh, if you look at the uh, the force deployment in terms of of where the Russians are putting a lot of their forces, this is the perfect and most opportune time to uh, conduct Operation uh, Checkmate. And again, that is the possible uh, operation in which uh, Vladimir Putin seizes the uh, the Baltic states. Uh, a lot of the uh, the activity right now of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization is kind of biting into exactly what Putin is trying to move, uh, prove in terms of the deployment of additional assets into uh, these uh, these Baltic states. We got F-15 Strike Eagles now being deployed, among other other assets being moved into the Baltic states and areas such as Poland. So, uh, if you look at the forces that uh, he is deploying uh, in Belarus. Again, uh, a lot of uh, air assault and uh, airborne formations that uh, would be most ideal 
a foreign operation into the Baltic states. Now, again, this could be a, a, uh, a set of operations just against the Baltics uh, themselves. Uh, if that were to occur, then obviously that would initiate uh, Article 5, and uh, uh, in all probability we would, we would see a major military conflict. Now, with that being said, he, he would also then have to move into the Ukraine as well. So it could be a multi-prong operation where he would move into both the Ukraine and the Baltic states. So uh, if I was Vladimir Putin and I was looking at uh, a, 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 a no-win situation, if I felt that way and I felt that I had to, to make a military move against NATO and I wanted to eventually defeat NATO, that is probably what I would do. I would uh, uh, immediately move against the Baltic states because if he just moves against Ukraine alone, uh, the United States and uh, NATO are going to move additional assets into the Baltic states and make it even more challenging for the Russians uh, to launch uh, set operations. So it would be a, an opportune time as he's doing this buildup in Belarus to to launch a, uh, a, a, a two-pronged operation, one into... Uh, the Baltics and the other into uh, Ukraine. I do not believe, again, uh, a lot of these European countries will act on Article 5 and will come to the aid of these Baltic states. So the well, idea that this will become a third world war, war uh, I, I would say, is, is very, very minute. Um, I think uh, the, uh, the West has, has it in its mindset right now that it does not want to fight Russia. And it's going to do everything in its power not to fight Russia. And therefore, if if we do see a movement of the Baltics, uh, again, I just don't think there is that gumption to fight the Russian Federation at this point. And given this buildup of forces, again, you're kind of looking at the, uh, the, the opportune size of forces that would be needed. And uh, he would also have the element of surprise because everyone right now is looking more towards what is he going to do in terms of uh, his operations against Ukraine. Now, in all likelihood, that's not going to happen. He's not going to invade the Baltics. But again, uh, if I was uh, if I was Putin and and I decided that I needed to really check NATO, that is probably what I what I would do. Uh, because uh, either way, he's going to be in a high-intensity war if he has decided to to invade Ukraine. So that's kind of where we stand right now. But again, very, very difficult to say what the final outcome of this is going to be. Again, he could invade. He could withdraw. He could, again, suddenly do a, a sudden pullback of forces, and then some sort of manufactured provocation occur, and then, then, then all hell breaks loose, and then he finally does invade Ukraine. So again, very, very difficult to say, but um, something is going to happen. What that something is, not sure yet. Again, could be military, could be something other than military. But again, the 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 the, the Russians, the whole concept of of Maskarova is 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 very much alive, and uh, these are not stupid people in the Kremlin. Okay, these are not stupid people, and. Uh, they could absolutely surprise you uh, in the end. So just, I, I would say, be careful in terms of what we're watching right now and what could what could happen in the uh, in the future. Have a good day, everybody.